refuting one of Jordan Peterson's, one of Brett Weinstein's, and one of Stefan Molyneux's ideas with one single idea. Jordan Peterson has stated on a few different occasions that humans are naturally evil and that the world is full of malevolence. Uh, Brett Weinstein, well let's do Stefan first. Stefan Molyneux um, has, at least my understanding, is that facts, logic, reason, and evidence and valid arguments will bring about positive change or is the best way to bring about positive change or a good way to bring about positive change. Uh, Brett Weinstein in his recent video said that conservative values are not timeless but need to change to adapt to modern situations. Now on one level what they're saying is true but on another level it's really missing the mark. Um, humans' brains require specific environmental cues in order to develop and mature. I would argue that modern humans beginning 12,000 years ago lost the cultural ability to cue their offspring in ways required for full, for full brain development. And as a consequence, modern humans' brains are near universally stunted in their development as mammals. This cultural mishap of sorts would have rendered any other mammal extinct, but having previously evolved an analytical thinking software, humans figured out how to avoid extinction despite having lost the ability to fully develop their mammal instincts. The cause of this is as of yet unknown, but the effect is widely accepted in academia based on solid archaeological evidence, namely that for 200,000 years, fully human ancestors of ours were universally peaceful. I'm going to say that again. For 200,000 years, our fully human ancestors were universally peaceful. Not until the invention of farming does evidence of human-on-human -human violence show up in the archaeological record a mere 12,000 years ago, and it instantly became near universal. To my knowledge, our bipedal ancestors from which we evolved were also free of intraspecies violence for two million years prior to human emergence. With the near instantaneous emergence of violence 12,000 years ago, evolutionary forces cannot be blamed for human violence. In other words, Human violence is not human nature, it, and it is not human nature to be homicidal. So it's human nature to be violent towards animals, in other words, hunt animals, but not to physically harm other humans. Can't be the case. All right, so now for Stefan's reason and evidence. Because we know that spanking children causes disadvantageous effects to the human brain, and since for so much of modern history spanking has been the norm, we can argue that humans have lost the most advantageous child-rearing abilities due to a loss of their mammal instincts or they've suppressed their mammal instincts with too much analytical thought or too much selfish survival instincts. So a side note here, we have three main programs in our brain that we've developed through evolution. We have reptilian survival selfish instincts. 
we have mammalian, altruistic, cooperative, peaceful instincts to rear our children, and we have the analytical computer brain that only humans have fully developed. All right, moving on. Unfortunately, our analytical minds have little to no motivation by themselves. Instead, motivation is derived from our mammal brain instincts. For example, to care for our children. Or our reptilian brain instincts. For example, to eat our children for lunch, which is what many reptiles do without thinking twice. The analytical mind is simply a tool used for the motivations of either the mammal altruistic or the reptile survival instincts, parts of our brain. Appealing to a modern human with reason and evidence generally has little impact unless you can simultaneously get their non-rational mammal or reptile brains on your side. But these respond best to emotional appeals, not to reason and evidence. Now for Brett Weinstein. Until our biology evolves, which in my estimation would take about 100,000 years, and we're only 10% of the way there, since human violence started, it's been about 12,000 years. Or, until we hack and reprogram our biology into something new, which could be around the corner, but until one of those two things happens, the religious conservative values at their core will be relevant. And so, for our current species, they will be relevant for quite some time unless we change ourselves so that they're not relevant. Not culturally, but biologically. Here's why. Religion as we know it, post-violence, as documented in religious texts, focuses on how to heal our developmentally stunted brains. The part of the brain that experiences spirituality is the same part that allows us to be altruistic, cooperative, kind, all the while suppressing violence and selfish instincts. It is the part that brings us internal peace and gives us meaning. After the unknown trauma that caused humans to become widely violent to each other, those who dodged the unknown trauma's effects and retained their spiritual capacities felt the need to help their inflicted brethren. Not knowing what happened and considering that it's impossible to explain with words, which is a function of the computer thinking brain, how to develop one's stunted mammal instincts, totally different part of the brain, All the spirituality intact humans could do was write lists of rules that represented the behaviors of a healthy, fully developed human in hopes that by practicing the behaviors of a healthy human, their dysfunctional brains would eventually heal. So until we evolve, which is going to be another 90,000 years, until we genetically modify ourselves, which could be soon, and I highly suggest we not do that until we heal ourselves, because we don't want our survival instincts from our reptile brain in cahoots with our computer brain doing the modification of our genes. I would want to have an altruistic part of our brain having a say in its full capacity of how to alter our genes, if we choose to do so. Or three, until we heal our stunted mammal brains. Until one of these three things happen, religious conservative values will be relevant at their core because they are a recipe for how to heal our developmentally stunted brains.
I'm sure you have lots of questions. Please ask them, and I will do my best to respond. If part of this made any sense to you, uh, please ask your questions because I'm sure parts of it were very confusing.